Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you doing? I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus. The video you are about to watch, um, you know, that makes us to understand that uh, false prophets and uh, false prophecies, they are not a thing of today. They have actually, they have actually been as old as, you know, um, the church, as old as the church can be, uh, because even the apostles in their own time warned us about them. They are already in our midst and uh, the enduring grace of God has just been there. And so we're going to listen to Pastor Kumuye talk about the false prophecies and how people came and they wanted to shift him from his belief. And, uh, you know, there was the recent video where Apostle Arome said he wondered how people like Pastor Kumuye survived because for a man to have survived 50 years, you know, in the midst of terrible and, you know, stagnated, you know, it's not even uh, stagnant. It is co progressive corruption, corruption everywhere. And yet he has, you know, remained steadfast. I know this may not <laughs> sit well with some persons that have issues with pastors, but that is not for me. It's, you know, it's whatever you think about that. So you're going to listen to him how that you know, some prophecies came about how God was going to destroy Lagos and also a man of God that was taken because he drifted and fell into error. Um, this will bless your soul. I believe this is a classic message of Pastor W.F. Kumi. I wish you a happy viewing and God bless you. Please do share the video and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And remain steadfast, remain blessed, and may you not fall away in the name of Jesus Christ. I leave you to watch the video and listen to the message to the end. I will see you in the next video. Till then, from me to you, Shalom. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Welcome to another edition of Pastor Kumui's Illustrations. Everything that Jesus spoke about, you will walk in the will of God. Then he said in verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity, ye workers of iniquity. And so then we understand that Jesus has sounded the warning. Your mind will tell you it doesn't matter. He will help me. I have not got counseling from my own local pastor. And I have not got counseling from the pastor in the central church. I think I would rather go there. After all, I need attention. But you are not going to get the right attention. And it is better not to get wrong attention. And to wait. And to be patient. Until the person you know. You know his family life. You know his teaching. You know it's in and out. You know it's life. You know that this one is following after Christ. Go to your pastor for counseling. Rather than you go here, you go there, everywhere you hear they are making noise somewhere, carrying Bibles somewhere, prophesying in the name of Jesus somewhere, every prayer house, every backyard, a place of worship, you are scattering there. Make sure that you stand upon the word of God. And if it's not possible for you to directly see your pastor because maybe he's too busy, why don't you write? If you will write, then you'll be able to communicate that same need that you have. Rather than we hear that you are there today, you are there tomorrow, and you are going to look at what they're doing over there. Beware and follow the words of the Lord. They will come to you in sheep's clothing. But it is to deceive. And once they begin to say, well, the Bible says so, but run away from them. Anybody that will put a but on the Bible. Anybody that will say, yes, we know the Bible says that, but actually, as at now, the way we understand it, and they begin to twist the Bible, you will run away from them, whoever that individual may be. I pray God will help us to watch. 
in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 24. Jesus said, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets that shall show great signs and wonders. Not ordinary signs and wonders. Some people will say, mm, Brother so and so led. Although he's no more with us. But look at the miracle. Look at the healing. Ah, if you stay there, you'll be deceived. Jesus said that they will demonstrate great signs and wonders. I'm not saying they are demonstrating any signs and wonders. I'm not seeing any of these present day people that have left the truth, that have left the fountain of living waters, that have left all the things they stood for before, that have left the foundation, which is Christ, that have left any part of the word of God, that are now bringing in worldliness and gossiping and evil speech, and that are doing things, slandering, and doing things that are evil. I've not seen any of them reporting all these great signs and wonders that we're talking about. But Jesus said, even if it were possible that somebody will leave the sound doctrine concerning marriage, will leave the sound doctrine concerning the fact that we need to walk straight and walk holy and walk upright and walk righteous, if that person will even have great signs and wonders, he said that you should not be deceived. He said, in so much that it were, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I pray that I will not be deceived. In all these years, a lot of people have seen me. A lot of people have met me. And a lot of preachers have come and gone. And many of them, whenever they come to this city of Lagos, they normally will, will come to me sometimes. And then they will say, look at this book. And look at this. And look at that. And I'll say, thank you very much. The Bible is in all. The word of God. And some of them have even preached directly. I'm telling you that from the very beginning of this ministry, I've had to contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. In the early 70s, in the late 70s, in the early 80s, in the late 80s, I found people, they discussed with me directly. And, uh, you know, a lot of things that have taken place in the East. Many times, some of those people that are perpetrating the thing, they will come to me. In fact, when some things were taking place at Onicha many years ago, and connected with Enugu, connected with a lot of places in the East, and those people, you know, they will tell me that somebody just sat down like this, and he just held the pen, and was just writing in the Spirit. And these illiterate just wrote about 24 pages or more. And then some people came to me, they said, you are a teacher. God has given them a prophet there, an apostle there, and this one there. And they said, great signs are happening. Wonders are happening. They said, the Lord has sent them to me, that I will come to Onicha at that time, and that I will give in the ministry of the teacher to complete the uh, apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher ministry. And I said, that thing is not of God, that I will not join. Some of the people in Lagos, they were deceived. Some of the people ran to me. They said that prophecy came out. That God said that he's finished for the city of Lagos. That he was going to destroy Lagos. And that therefore everybody should run. There was a particular sister that resigned her appointment. And a particular man that got his wife and ran. And they all went to Nietzsche by that time. And he said, make announcements at the Bible study at that time that danger was coming, that God was going to destroy the city of Lagos. I told them, we have more than ten righteous people in the church. And that God said, if I see ten righteous people there, fine out. And then I sit here. Those people resigned their job. Who gave up their ministry? who gave up a lot of things and ran. And then they came to me, they, they said they fasted, two of them, they came, they fasted three days, not eating, not drinking. And after the fasting, without breaking the fast, according to them, they came directly to me. And they were very, very bold, authoritative. While they were talking, they said, Thus says the Lord, the Lord has sent us because we just came out of these three days fasting. 
and then he said you should come over to that other side and join us if you don't here is the word of the Lord and then they said that I will die and I said sudden death sudden glory that if I died I'll be going to God I said wait a minute you're seeing somebody you cannot terrify with death O oh, death where is thy victory and O oh, grave where is thy sting because death is swallowed up in victory and then I spoke to them do you know after they had passed three days and they came to talk to me, they said, I should join them, I should join them. I spoke to them straight. One of them was delivered. That same week. And then he came back to me and he said, when you were talking, the Lord spoke to me. And then he changed. The other fellow was not convinced immediately. But after some months, he boycotted all those things at Tunisia. And then he came back to deeper life. It is good to stand with the truth. Stand with the word of God. And I've seen a lot of wind blow all these various years. But thank God we're standing. I said thank God we're standing. And I pray that every one of you will keep on standing on the truth in Jesus' name. You know, all over this year, some people have said change the doctrine of marriage. I said nothing like that. They said, change the doctrine on this area. I said, nothing like that. I said, God has raised up this deeper life to earnestly contend for the faith. Once delivered unto the saints. And I'm really grateful to God because he has honored his name. He has glorified his name. And here we have a lot of people believing in the Lord and believing in the Bible. I pray that the Bible, the word of God, the Lord has given you. Nothing will ever be able to take it away from you in Jesus' name. But you know, I lost friends. The people that were just together like this in the early days. In the early days, the people that we evangelized together, we did this together, we did that together, and they began to read some books and some materials and began to listen to some cases. And they said, bro, get this, bro, get this. And then I said, this thing is different. Yes, they said, but in a particular case, they said, it would give us atomic power. And then there was a book they showed me and the fellow said, I will give you all the books for free. You will not pay for it at all. I said, I have not finished reading my Bible. I have got the word of God. And I rejected all those things. I'm telling you, I'm so sorry for them. If I even mention their names now, because it's so many years ago, they've left the work of God. They've scattered. There's nothing happening there. A man died some time ago in Akwaibom. If I mention his name, you'll know his name, but I will not. And this man, we were together in the early days. Oh, we went about. And he was a great preacher, militant preacher. In fact, in, in my younger days, whenever we were in Lagos, they invited them. Sometimes they invited them to Unilag. Sometimes they invited them to Akiwumi Street. And that man, oh, that man can preach. That man can preach. I'll sit down in the pew like you are sitting in the pew now. And I will listen to that man. He will take the Bible like this. He will go from Genesis to Revelation. And I will cry and say, oh God, how can I preach like this man? But they began to play with women. And they began to teach some erroneous doctrines. That some people are born demons. And they can never repent. They said a lot of things. And immediately I saw that, although I didn't have all the charisma they had, all the power they had, all the great, great things they had, I just went apart. And I will, I will not cooperate again. And the little that God allowed me to do, I was doing. But before he died, some years ago, because he had gone into immorality, a lot of things had happened. And then I went to Porter Court. Uh, to go and see the work of the Lord. And he happened to be passing outside. And it was a time we were finishing our Bible study that I went for. And he saw people trooping out. And that time we were using a particular uh, community hall or so in Port Harcourt. And he was passing. 
and at that time his ministry has you know divided and things have gone down and he was just roaming about nobody will invite him for crusade things have been bad at that time and then he said this is nice are they having market here he said no he said that is deeper life deeper life is that not the one that came from lagos people said yes and he said, even the man, he came to visit them. He rushed in without looking for any usher. And he was looking for me. Then he saw me and he grabbed me. He said, you said so. And he said, see, all these people, I've been hearing. I didn't know it is like this. He said, please permit me that I will come to Lagos and come and stay with you. Maybe I can get the fire back see and eventually he died when he died his people wrote to me sent his picture and the obituary they said your friend because they remembered many many years ago but were we really friends when i went this way a straight narrow way that leads unto glory and he accepted and remained in the broad way. And I looked up and I said, God, it pays to stand for the truth. And I wouldn't say I have suffered. No, I have not suffered. God has been keeping me. He's been helping me. I have not tasted the suffering, the agony, the desertion, my friends, like Paul the Apostle suffered, God has so protected me. He has protected his word. And look at it the way we rejoice today. But we are in sound doctrine because I took my stand. What if before you became born again, I had gone into error? How would you have been in this place today? God has helped me to stand. God can help you to stand. For the sake of the church, for the sake of the coming generation, for the sake of our children, for the sake of our wives, for the sake of the people that are not born again yet, for the sake of our own lives, for the sake of Christ who died on the cross of Calvary, let us stand together. I don't need to finish the outline. Let us stand. Let us stand. We'll stand together on the truth of the word of God. We'll stand together on teaching this word of God, contending earnestly for the faith, contending earnestly for the faith, contending earnestly for the faith, contending earnestly for the faith once delivered unto the saints. I hope you have been blessed by this edition of Pastor Kumui's illustrations. Please don't let this illustration die. Pass it on to others and you could be of help to someone somewhere. Till we meet next week again for another edition of Pastor Kumui's illustrations. Remain blessed.